the session in which we will discuss logical access controls. Logical access controls are methods, policies, and procedures that help us do what? Manage access. For what purpose? Is for protection. That's why we want to know who can access the information, who can access the system, who can access the network. Why? Because if somebody wants to attack you, first they need a point of entrance, which is an access. So logical access controls, they control user interaction with the system, whether it's the operating system, the application, the data, the network, so on and so forth. And this ensures that only authorized people can access the system and can use certain resources based on their authorization level. They are allowed to perform certain allowable action. We can have different type of allowable action. What action they can what action can the user or the system to perform allow to perform? They can read, write, execute, delete, create, modify, a various forms of those. There are certain tools or or resources that we could utilize for logical access control. In the prior session, we looked at authentication and authorization. In this session, we would look at firewalls and, and encryption. Let's go ahead and get started by first discussing what are firewalls. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Firewall serves as an important logical access control mechanism. It helps organization do what? Safeguard their network, because this is how the intruder comes through the network. And they can, if they go through the network, they can go into your accounting information system or your information system in general. So fire controls control both incoming and outgoing network traffic based on whatever we establish, what's allowed and what's not. At its most basic level, a firewall is designed to do what? Block unauthorized access, assuming we can identify them. And this is what we do. We program it. We tell it what to allow what not to allow while permitting authorized communication the most obvious example of this kind of just kind of help you like see it real quick for example you don't want certain websites to access to to be accessible you would list those on the network on the firewall therefore those websites are not you are not allowed to access them Let's dive a little bit more into details of the role of the firewall and logical access control. One thing they can do is they can packet filtering. What is that? They examine packets of data because this is how the data is communicated on the internet through packets. They can examine the packet to determine whether to allow or block them based on the rules that define permissible source and destination IP addresses, ports, and protocol. For example, we can block all incoming traffic from a malicious IP addresses. For example, we know that this IP address is malicious therefore if anyone try to log in from there or for example we don't want our employees to be accessing for example porn site we could list those that said they are not allowed another role is stateful inspection well firewalls not only inspect packet but also keep track of the state of active connection and use this context to make decision on which packets to allow so they sniff the packet it's like a dog determine whether it's good or not and allow it they inspect it allowing only established and related incoming traffic, thus blocking unsolicited incoming traffic. They could be used as proxy services. Firewalls can act, act as intermediaries, proxies between users and the service they access, relying requests and responses between them. That's another role that the firewall plays. Example, forward and reverse proxy services to control and monitor traffic between internal users and external services. Just what, monitor what's going on, proxy service. Other roles, it could be used as a VPN, a virtual private network, which allow secure communication between different network over the internet by creating encrypt, encrypted VPN tunnel. For example, enabling an employee to access the corporate resources securely. Application layer filtering. Firewalls can expect and block traffic based on the content, recognizing and preventing attacks that operate at the application layer level. 
Example, blocking access to specific websites or web content. Intrusion detection and prevention detection, and this is an important role for firewalls. They can detect and prevent known malicious activities and attacks by analyzing traffic for pattern or signature characteristic by known threats. For example, blocking traffic containing malicious payloads or explode attempt. Now, also, the logical firewall would help with also what else? Phishing. We talked about phishing in a separate recording and we say you, you want to have a firewall. But in this session, we talked about more about the firewall. What are the different types of firewall? Basically, we have three different types. We have the network-based firewall. Think of the network as business type of base firewall. Deployed at the perimeter of the network, they are used to regulate traffic entering and exiting the network. Basically, hardware firewall appliances installed between a corporate network and the internet. We have a host-based firewall. Think of this as a just for your computer, for your station, installed on individual devices like servers or workstation. They control network traffic to and from those devices. So, for example, you could have a host-based firewall at your home. Example will be Windows Firewall on a window operating system. And we have the cloud-based firewalls, simply put. The firewall is part of your cloud, hosted in the cloud. They provide scalable and flexible firewall services to organization. Now we have a separate recording talking about the pros and the cons of the cloud, but now the firewall is not installed at your server. It's basically part of a cloud service. So here, the firewall as a service solution, as a FAS. What are some security considerations we have to be aware of when we have firewalls? Again, the firewalls, although they protect you, they need protection as well. First, the organization needs to define comprehensive and secure firewall policies to ensure only legitimate traffic is allowed. Why am I saying this? Because sometimes the firewall may prevent legitimate communication because they misinterpret the instruction. Example, creating, for example, only allow list and block list policies for inbound and outbound traffic. For example, also we talked about, we're, we're always talking about inbound, but also the outbound. For example, if you work at a bank, I know you cannot email account information because I know that because my banker could not send me an email with my accounting information in it because the, the email wouldn't go out. It will block it, outgoing traffic. Firewall management. Well, managing and maintaining firewall is crucial to ensure that are effective in securing the network against emerging threat. You wanna keep it up to date. Regular update. If you don't do that, then the firewall is not as good. Regularly updating firewall rules and firmware software to address vulnerabilities. Also monitoring and logging all the activities. Continuous monitoring and logging of firewall activities are crucial for detecting and responding to security incidents. Example will be monitoring fire, firewall logs to identify and investigate any suspicious activity. So either the, you, just, you cannot just have a firewall and forget about it, you have to maintain it, you have to update it. Now let's move to encryption. What is encryption? Encryption is a critical logical control that protects information by converting it into a coded form unreadable by unauthorized individual in its simplest form to, let's assume, two individuals. And this is what used to happen back in the old days, okay? You know, the king and the head of the military command. The head of the military will communicate with the king about, you know, what's going on. But they want this message to be secure. So they will send a message, you know, a letter, okay? And in that letter, they will have, you know, they will have numbers, for example, one, two, five, seven, eight, nine then another statement uh three four seven eight each of these letters represent a code for example uh, attack now for example they want to say tell the king we're attacking now okay so rather than writing attack now they will have code for example a is number three t is number seven three c will have a different number now the king will know this because the king will have a manual on how to decrypt those messages but if this letter was you know as someone else like the enemy caught this letter they, they don't know what's the message between the military commander and the king so that that's that's it's in basic i'm trying to simplify as much as possible that's what encrypting the message is because this is for cpa this is not for technical so you guys i'm sure you got the you got the point it uses algorithm and cryptographic keys to scramble and unscramble data so you need technology to unscramble the data this logic 
This logical control is vital in securing both data at rest and data in transit. So we have to understand what does it mean data at rest and data in transit. Encryption is a logical control in different scenarios. First, data at rest. It means you have the data and it's not moving. It's sitting somewhere in your database, in your warehouse database, so on and so forth. Protect stored data from unauthorized access and breaches. Example will be you have a hard drive and the information is sitting there. Encrypting hard drive databases and files using technologies like BitLocker or transparent data encryption. Just those are different technology because the data is resting. But in case someone access the database, they cannot even read it after they access it. So assuming they got the authentication, the authorization, they went into the database. If it's encrypted, there's nothing they can do. So they have to. So think about it. But let's think about it from this perspective. We're talking about logical control, and this is a good thing. So first, we have the firewall. You were able to penetrate the firewall at the company. You went in there. You stole someone's identity. So you authentic authenticity is gone and they gain authority. Authority as a logical control is also defeated. Now, you're inside the database, but the database is encrypted. There is nothing you can do. So notice there's a multiple layer of defense here. Data could be in transit. What's data in transit? It's basically when you are, when that data is going from one, net, from one network to the other, from one person to the other. Secures data as it travels over network because this is when it really also get intercepted, preventing interception and access by unauthorized entities. An example will be using SSL and TLS protocols to encrypt the data. You don't even have to know, just know it's the data is encrypted. So in case someone see, intercept that data, they cannot, they cannot read it. If they read it, they don't understand what it is because it's encrypted. Also, we have end-to-end -end encryption. For example, when you use your cell phone, if you're using WhatsApp, that's end-to-end encryption data ensure that data is encrypted on the sender system or device and only decrypted on the recipient system or device when you send messages on whatsapp they say it's end-to-end -end encryption it means if it was if it was caught if somebody intercepted this message it will be coded email encryption basically the same concept the purpose is to protect the content of emails from being read by entities other than the intended recipient let's go back to the banking quest to, to the banking to the banking example. So they cannot put their account number inside the email. Remember I told you, if they send me an email and they have my number, one, two, four, five, six. If this is my account number, if they send me, you know, for your account number, blah, 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 the firewall will block them. They can, I cannot receive this email. But what they can do, they can put a document inside the email and encrypt the document. Then once I receive the document, they can call me and say, this is the decryption key. Then this is what happened. In reality so I'll, I'll click on the document I'll open the document I'll, I will need the key then I will input the key which is five three let's use letters X L, X L seven six okay I'll put X L seven six and I'll be able to access the document whatever information they need to send me but they cannot send it in an email so what they did they encrypted it example of pretty good privacy to encrypt email content this is again one of those tools Benefits of encryption as a logical control access is confidentiality, obviously. It ensures that sensitive information is accessible only to authorized parties. So my banking information is, is protected. Integrity. Assist in maintaining and assuring the accuracy and consistency of the data over its life cycle. So the data is not changed. That's the integrity of the data. Authentication. It will verify the origin of the message, confirming it has not been altered. When you encrypt it, that's it. You know that's the original message. Non-repudiation, ensure that a sender cannot deny the authenticity of the message sent. If you send it, you cannot say, yeah, that's not mine. Compliance helps in, helps in complying with various regulation and standard, like the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation, and HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, that mandate, for example, if, you, if your business is subject to those, you have to have your data encrypted the protection of sensitive data. Now, there are challenges, just like with the firewall, there are challenges to having encryption. One thing is key management, managing the cryptographic keys securely, because remember, when someone receives the message, they need that secret key, the cryptographic key, and require meticulous attention. You don't want to lose that, right? Perf performance overhead. <laughs> well, there's a cost for everything. Um, and also, it's going to, it's going to slow down your, your your business. The process of encrypting and decrypting 
can introduce latency and impact system performance, which is simply it's going to slow down the system. But that's the price you are willing to pay for security. People don't like it. User experience. The need for encryption can sometimes interfer interfere with the with the user experience, especially if it's required user to perform additional steps or if it impact performance, especially additional steps. And if that individual think about sending something for an an old person that's not familiar with technology and ask them to decrypt the message in order to find what they need to find. They're not going to like it. Okay. Let's take a look at this MCQ from Farhat Lectures. WebTAC implemented a security mechanism that scrutinizes and filters incoming and outgoing traffic, allowing or blocking data packets based on predefined rules. What is the security mechanism employed by this company? Is it encryption? Is it firewall? Is it authentication? Is it authorization? Well, I can easily take out C, authentication, because authentication is making sure the appropriate person have access to the appropriate, you know, to the, to the system. That's not what we're talking about here. Authorization means once the person has been authenticated, we'll give them certain privileges. We're not talking about this here. This is not a person that, you know, a person can do this <laughs> regulating incoming and outgoing traffic. So C and D are out. What we're left with is encryption and firewall. Well, let me tell you something. This is the classic definition of the purpose of a firewall because the encryption, what does the encryption does? The encryption making sure the information is encrypted, unreadable by a third party unless you have the, that decrypted line. Here, what we are doing, we're scrutinizing, we're securing and filtering incoming and outgoing traffic based on predetermined rule, whether we allow it or not. That's different than reading what's inside that message, which is the encryption. So A is out. B is a classic example for the firewall. Now, obviously, if you if you listen to this recording, you would say this is an easy question. Yes, this is an easy question because I just explained everything. But what you should do now, go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs that's going to help you do what? Practice what you just learned. Practice it in application. So you are ready, whether you are studying for the CPA exam, which is you have to study for it, it's worth it, stay motivated, you'll get your reward down the road or you're an accounting information system, invest in yourself. This is a 20 to 30 year investment. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.